Today is uh, Monday, de December 27th, just a couple few days after Christmas, and uh, we've got kind of the city shut down for uh, a blizzard warning, and uh, so I thought it's kind of quiet in the shop, so it'd be a good time to talk about uh, how to select mats and frames, which is a pretty big subject. And as you can see here in our little shop, we have thousands of frame samples to choose from and um, it's pretty much a never-ending uh, choice especially when you think that um, you can cap one frame over another you can alter a frame by um, you know coloring an edge and uh, I mean it's just an endless possibilities and then with the mats there's about a thousand mat samples here to choose from and we have everything from regular mats to fabric mats to um, you know mats with textures of like marble and stuff on them so uh, again almost an endless possibility and black core mats and then we can fabric cover mats and we can uh, chalk mats and paint mats so again the possibilities are about endless but a couple of things to remember that would right away eliminate 99% of the possibilities is uh, do you want kind of a, a minimalist gallery look or more of a um, frame and mat that relates to the picture or are you trying to relate to something in the room and uh, most of the time what I like to do is pick a, a frame and mat that uh, relates to the picture and I usually start with looking at the um, colors in the focal point of the picture like take this elephant for example it's got these kind of greenish gray tones and so my first choice is to find a mat that has those kind of colors and in this case after looking at many many of them I settled on this one and then uh, I look for a top mat that has more of an overall color of like a background color and we almost went with the blue because that is kind of that blue in the background but for the customer's home and uh, for how it's relating to everything around it we ended up with this kind of creamy color which is in the highlights of the elephant and then for frame when they brought it in they had a photograph of a lion by the same artist that they really liked a lot and they thought well we'll just match what the lion was and here's what they had on the lion was this um, gold frame or very similar to this they had a picture on their smartphone uh, a gold frame with a uh, fabric covered liner and then a a little gold fillet inside that and to me that made sense when you look at all the colors in the lion uh, fur but as you can see it has no relationship to this elephant so you know I, I do whatever the customer wants but I first like to make suggestions on what I think would look good so we look at a lot of frames and the frame that we both uh, liked a lot. When I say we, I should say my wife and I looked at a lot of frames and the frames that we proposed for this one was this frame, which um, to me is just perfect with the texture of the you know, skin of the elephant. And uh, I thought the colors were just terrific. So we're going with um, this frame rather than this frame and um, then we're laying this onto a mat because it has a beautiful deckle edge on the paper and it'll be floated on this uh, uh, mat and uh, so we see that beautiful deckle edge but uh, again there's a thousand ways to do this and to me the best way to do it is First start with the focal point color, which is usually stronger. Find a mat for that color. Then the outside mat, like a softer usually color, 
normally a background color, and then a frame that relates to that inside matte color. And it's hard to go wrong when you do it that way. Now, I do get a lot of people that want a minimalist kind of gallery look. And for that, most people like a simple black frame and a white mat, you know, white acid-free mat. And I don't try real hard to talk people out of it, but I just like to show them, you know, how you can um, relate so much more to the picture if you use... Uh, colors and uh, frame styles that relate a lot more to what you're framing. But I do have some people say everything in my house is uh, white mats and a black frame so they want to continue that look. And that's a v very legitimate, um, you know, reasonable way to do things. Uh, try and coordinate everything in the house but uh, everybody's tastes are different. Me, I like to have each individual thing um, relate to the picture no matter if it relates to the things around it but for me I like kind of an eclectic look more than you know a look where everything is matching just like you know the pictures here around the shop that we did for ourselves you know here's um, since we're into you know antiques and antique phonographs and stuff I have pictures here of like there's um, an ad for uh, the phonographs on this shelf above my head. I had have the one through six. So there's, uh, you know, a mat with a black core. And um, since the paper is that kind of soft white, that's the mat. And then since the uh, uh, lettering is black, then we have a black frame and it happens to have, you know, a little silvery edge on it. So to me, it has a nice relationship to that. Now here's a newspaper article about our uh, store we're in. It's a neighborhood grocery store and we just put a, a black uh, metal frame around it and no mat and some of the reason was you know where it's going um, not a lot of room there to put too big of a thing. And then like here's a picture of my wife with our little uh, dogs and she's wearing blue and so we've got a uh, blue uh, fabric uh, liner and we could have used a frame that was a little lighter but you can see in the hair and the dog colors you do have some of that brown and um, this uh, antique photograph has kind of that strange greenish kind of tinge to it tint to it so the frame has you know that uh, green tone and here's a sepia tone print uh, that's a little stronger brown than the lighter sepia but again top matte like an overall background color inside matte like a focal point and then a frame relating to the um, you know colors in the picture and when you stand back these have you know nothing to do with each other as far as color but each individual piece uh, looks nice for each thing and um, to give you an idea of getting things to uh, relate in the wall more than relate in the picture, we're working on a project for um, a commercial project and we get um, proposals like this where they have, you know, uh, the different corridors down the wall and uh, um, what they're doing with this project is they have all these um, pieces that are already framed and what they're trying to do is make them all uh, look coordinated uh, you know same height um, and uh, most of them same width and same frame style uh, throughout the um, groupings so here you can see what they've looked like and what we're starting with and um, that is, you know, down one corridor, and you can see the frames are all a little different shape and size, and they're specific to what's going in them. And that's the way we normally frame things. Like you can see one here that is done, and um, but they want to have the frames all the same height and use um, the same style of frame with two different sizes because they're hanging side by side down a few different corridors. So what they uh, chose 
was um, on one corridor this bigger frame and you can see um, it's a, a brown in the frame has a, a brown uh, walnutty color on the uh, face of it with a black edge and the black is around you know the outside the outside edge and um, below that is the original way they were framed so uh, they started with the parameters of wanting um, 37 uh, wide 26 inches tall and take out the pieces that were in this frame and uh, put it in that frame that's um, 37 um, or no it's 32 by 37 and uh, so we had to you know figure out the positioning of all these openings and cutting all the mat openings and uh, you know it's a, a very um, uh, reasonable uh, approach to it to think you know more about the room and how everything coordinates together than about each individual piece now for me I like you know each individual piece but um, I can see that this is going to look really nice all you know the same height and the color of mat and frame to match the colors in their in their room and uh, um, it's um, quite an interesting project and here's some of the frames that they had looked at before they chose the ones that we ended up with. So it's always a process to figure out um, what you like and what you want and uh, um, but to me it's a lot of fun and you know all these tickets you see all around the shop here there's a bunch behind these pieces it's a whole bunch over here um, these are all things that people came in with their projects and we kind of work on it together I consider it a collaboration between the customer and ourselves uh, meaning my wife and I and the customer and uh, you know picking out what we think looks good and I try real hard to um, not force my opinion on somebody but there's times that people want to do something that I find just horrifying you know like if someone wanted to put a uh, purple frame on this green elephant because they had purple drapes or something I would try real hard to talk them out of it but I would do it if they wanted but um, just like this frame on that elephant uh, I just um, you know I could see their reasoning was they liked what the lion looked like in it and it was going to hang right next to it but um, I think we're going to have it looking much better like this and uh, when um, we're picking out things too you know price has something to do with it too and like the commercial project there is costing them um, well, I'll just tell you, it's 5000 I can uh, cut out when I started talking about price. And so this is a continuation of, um, uh, you know, how to select mats and frames. And so uh, talking about price, um, here's an example of a piece that uh, has a, a beautiful original watercolor of a grandfather and the grandchild. And um, we... Uh, are putting this frame set up on it where we have uh, kind of a goldeny maple frame that relates to the uh, child's uh, hair and uh, skin tones and then the uh, uh, top mat kind of relates to that uh, you know white paper background color it's a real soft white and then the inside mat relates to that um, frame color the kind of goldeny hair tones and stuff and then we put in a middle mat of a dark blue that relates to uh, what the uh, grandfather's wearing and uh, we looked at uh, a few things but settled on this right away and then we uh, priced it out and um, this is going to end up to be with a triple mat and that particular maple frame um, two hundred and forty one dollars and eighty two cents and um, 
I've been doing this now so long. These, it's just embarrassing to me how much stuff costs these days. I mean, my first apartment cost me forty-five dollars a month, and I think about, you know, people spending uh, so much money on framing. I mean, like this elephant's going to end up to be um, four hundred and eighty-five dollars. But on both of these things, you know, there's ways to make a price difference. For example. Um, there's other kind of golden -y tone frames that would be quite a bit less. You could do um, a double mat rather than a triple mat. That would save a little bit, but not that much. Or you could do a single mat rather than a triple mat. And just to give you an idea, if you did a um, single mat rather than a triple mat, it'd be $27.93 less. But where the huge amount of price difference is, the... Uh, the cost of the frame. Now this frame has kind of an interesting, you know, shape and stuff that angle. I think it looks really nice. But there's frames similar colors that, you know, could end up um, changing this by like seventy dollars. Another big thing to think about is when this was um, measured up, the uh, size with a three inch mat border and three and a quarter at the bottom it's going to be sixteen and a quarter by nineteen and five eighths now uh, sixteen by twenty is a very common ready-made frame size and um, uh, if you went with a sixteen by twenty frame you'd have to kinda uh, fudge around the mat width a little bit but it's so close it would still look very proportionate to the picture to put this in a sixteen by twenty so in other words we could even use the same mat and um, make the inside of the mat the same and then the outside of the mat you know a little uh, off to make it fit that 16 by 20 uh, frame size but um, the uh, customer which is the grandfather in the picture this is a real special thing to him and he felt that was just fine to you know spend that um, money on it and I think it's going to look wonderful so uh, um, it's you know money enters into it you know it's uh, even for ourselves when we're framing our own things I've got some things up in the second floor that we framed that um, uh, some of our dog pictures that we took frames that uh, uh, other customers had um, uh, you know reframed something and and they didn't want the old frames and we stuck some of our dog pictures in the old frames and it's uh, well, here, I'll go upstairs and, and show you. Okay, here's some of the um, pictures I was talking about. They're mainly the ones on the right that are um, around that uh, fabric uh, picture of dogs. Of course, we have enough pictures of Pomeranians because that's what we had for all of our years together as Pomeranian dogs. But... Um, you can see that uh, a lot of this is um, not relating to what's next to it, but what I think looks good with the individual pieces. Like here's a, a needlework, and it's got, you know, the brown dogs and the ecru color background, so that's how that was framed. And um, there's, you know, just endless ways to do things but um, we uh, did things to usually relate to colors in the piece and by the way um, when you see these reflections in the glass um, I prefer myself clear picture frame glass over the fuzzy glass now Fuzzy glass is officially called non-glare, but non-glare does glare. It just glares a fuzzy glare. And um, here's some other things. I don't. I didn't turn any lights on in here, but um, you know, there's a needlework Lois did with the uh, bronze frame on it. Here's you know some more needlework, but. Again, you can see the theory top mat like background, um, inside mat like focal point, and then frame like the color in the focal point. 
And most of these are needlework set, uh, lowest bid. Now it's obvious I'm back downstairs, but uh, I just wanted to um, give you some more ideas about how to save money uh, framing pictures. And um, right now you should get out a pen and paper and uh, write this down. But um, the ready-made sizes are uh, 5x7, 8x10, 11x14, 16x14, 20x24, 24 by 36, um, 24 by 30, and 30 by 40. And you will find some other sizes once in a while, but those are the uh, main ready-made sizes. And as you can imagine, when you mass produce thousands of frames of the same size and shape and send them all around the country, the price compared to a custom frame is a fraction of what you know doing one at a time is. Um, another thing to think about is um, there's frames at thrift stores that are you know frame posters and pictures that have incredibly low prices like I have seen custom frames uh, for 15 to 40 dollars over at St. Francis thrift store which is a block away from me and I have had customers come in and just be horrified at what something costs to frame and I'll send them over there and they'll walk around uh, and see if they can find a, a frame that um, could be uh, uh, you know could work for their piece the color and style that they like and then we can um, take out the uh, uh, mats and frames and er, take out the mats and cut the frame down to the size that it needs to be or if we get real lucky if it's close enough size uh, make the outside of the mat fit the frame from the thrift store and the inside to fit their artwork but um, it does add up quick to you know do a custom uh, picture frame and um, I never go around and check what other people uh, charge for framing but I have had so much business where we're just buried in work in fact we're two and a half months behind right now and I know we couldn't be too far off with uh, our pricing or we wouldn't have all this work to do if we were you know charging way more than anybody else but to me it's just crazy how much all this stuff costs but uh, Anyway, I hope that uh, gave you some good ideas, and um, the other thing I should talk about too, though, is I'm, uh, I've got my uh, picture frame school in the basement that is uh, pretty much ready, and uh, um, so January 1st, just uh, the end of this week, is going to be my um, uh, official opening day for the picture frame school, and it's actually a frame and art workshop space downstairs. And um, I thought I'd give you a quick sneak peek of the um, art and frame workshop area down here. It starts with the computer here. And on the computer, I've got it loaded up with um, videos of uh, how to make a mat marker, how to uh, mark a mat and cut it, how to uh, cut a frame and how to put it together. and. Um, then I've got these giant tables in here that um, uh, go from down there to way down there. And um, I've got professional mat cutters and a wall mounted cutter and um, more so chopper and stuff that uh, is um, all ready to go for people to... Um, you know, cut their own uh, frames, put them together, and save a lot of money by buying lengths of frame and putting them together yourself. And uh, I also have an area for paper making and print making and uh, a kiln for doing uh, pottery. And so uh, my goal is that we have a bunch of fun down here and uh, 
and it'll be interesting to see what happens with all this. So I better uh, stop this video before it gets so long everybody falls asleep.